We are the Guinea Pig Collective. All will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. How you can avoid Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome back to another Toys from the Past. So on today's Toys from the Past, we are going to be talking about a toy line that most kids would remember from the 1980s and even up to today since they have been re-released in one form or another. We are talking about the Smurfs. Now, many people may remember those tiny little PVC figures that became so popular in the 1980s. Following on the successful launch of the 1981 Hanna-Barbera produced cartoon series titled the same, The Smurfs. This actually increased the popularity of the Smurfs and created a craze for those little PVC figures that were available. But what most people don't realize is that the Smurfs have been around a lot longer than the 1980s. Now, the Smurfs is actually a Belgian comic book series that was created by Peyo in 1958. And Dupuis, editor of the Smurf comics, first produced the Smurf figurines in 1959. Now, the first one was a series of only three figures being about five centimeters tall or so. It was Papa, Normal, and Angry. Now, following in the next decade, they actually started releasing larger figurines. Now, these were only for sale in French and Dutch-speaking countries. In 1965, Schleich, a German company, made the first truly mass-produced PVC Smurf figurines for sale. The first three being Normal Smurf, Gold Smurf, and Convict Smurf, complete with a black and white striped prisoner's outfit. <laughs> so in 1966, Spy Smurf, Angry Smurf, and Drummer Smurf appeared. And in 69, five more Smurfs followed, Moon Smurf, Winter Smurf, Brainy Smurf, Guitar Smurf, and Papa Smurf. In the 1970s, Smurfs were also produced by a rival German company called Bully. Now, the first of these figures were made as a promotion for Kellogg's, but were soon afterwards sold separately as well. And it is actually funny because for a long time, companies had used the Smurfs to promote Renault, National Benzel, and BP garages, mostly in the United Kingdom, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. These little tiny figurines were actually given away when gasoline was purchased. There was, however, a scarce story that claimed the Smurf figurines used leaded paint and is circulated in Britain in the 1970s, leading Jonathan King to release a single, Lick a Smurp for Christmas, All Fall Down, under the name of Father Abrahart and the Smurfs. This was a parody of the Smurf song by Father Abraham and the Smurfs, a worldwide hit single. The lead paint scare was brought about by a group of people. Yeah, can you imagine that group of people that just wanna like create a scare? Have we seen this before? It is brought about by a group of people in the marketing department of National Benzol who decide to outsource some Smurf figurines to be made in Hong Kong instead of Europe. And there was only four or five different lines that were produced. It was later discovered that these had been produced without adhering to the necessary quality standards, so they were deemed possibly unsafe. Paint dots were then introduced on the feet of the PVC figurine so that they could identify the ones with paint dots as having passed quality control standards. And they were also given different colors according to the different countries that they were produced in. Now, the Times had produced an article on October 4th of 1978 that said that tests by the Department of Health 
showed there was no significant risk. So Benzel then resumed sales of the Smurf figurines from Garage Four Quartz within the UK. And Smurf figurines being given away with petrol promotions actually still continue in production today. Now the popularity of the Smurfs in countries such as Belgium and Germany has never waned and Smurf collecting has become a growing hobby worldwide with over 400 different figures produced so far. New Smurf figures continue to appear. And the funny thing is, is only two years since 1969, which would be 1991 and 1998, have no new Smurfs entered the market. Now Schleich currently produces eight new figurines a year. Over 300 million of them have been sold so far. And of course, with the rise in popularity of the Smurfs, many other tie-in merchandise besides just the figurines were produced, such as Smurfberry Crunch Breakfast Cereal, which was created in 1983 by Post and later renamed to Smurf Magic Berries in 1988. And a limited time Smurfs Breakfast Cereal was also created in 2011 to coincide with the release of the 2011 Smurfs movie. Smurf ice creams were available in Australia mate, in 1979, and they consisted of two halves, each with its own stick, which could be easily separated. One half was a Smurf in blue, a Smurf berry, water-based ice block, and the other half was white vanilla ice cream. And of course, with the rise in popularity of that 1980s cartoon, there were little albums that were released with the Smurf music jingle on it, posters, shirts, you name it, that they were releasing it. I, I believe they even had bed sheets and other things such as that. It, it was extremely popular at the time, and it became a worldwide hit because of the success that the cartoon actually brought to these figures, which were already doing well all on their own. Long, long ago, deep in the forest, there was a hidden village where tiny creatures lived. They call themselves Smurfs. They even wound up having Smurfs on ice, <laughs> believe it or not. This is something that, you know, I, I probably would have never seen when I was a kid seeing the Smurfs on TV and seeing those little PVC figures, but you know what? You just never know where a franchise is going to wind up going when its popularity increases. I mean, just like a, a movie, like a live action or CGI live action type of movie. I mean, did anybody really think that they would see something like that? And of course, with that popularity, you also seen the Smurfs appearing in a lot of North American theme parks owned by King's Entertainment Corporation. Now, with all the positives that we already said about the Smurfs and a few negatives, one of these is just a little bit weird to me, and I saved this one for last before I go back into the rest of the discussion of those PVC figures that I remember from the 1980s. So, UNICEF in 2005 did an advertisement featuring the Smurfs, and it was aired in Belgium in which the Smurf village is annihilated by war bombs. Design is a UNICEF advertisement, and with the approval of the family of the Smurfs late creator, Peo, the 25-second episode was shown on the national evening news after the 9 p.m.'s time slot to avoid children seeing it. The scene starts with happy, peaceful Smurfs and butterflies, who are then bombed by warplanes, ending with a lone baby Smurf surrounded by dead Smurfs. The final frame bears the message, don't let war destroy the world of childhood. It was the keystone in a fundraising campaign by UNICEF's Belgium arm to raise money for the rehabilitation of former child soldiers in Burundi and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, both former Belgian colonies. There was Gargamel, the evil wizard. He was bad. Oh, I hate Smurfs. And in 2008, the Smurfs had celebrated their 50th anniversary and UNICEF was involved again. And hundreds of white plastic Smurfs, just 20 centimeters high, were scattered in select European cities for children to decorate. The plastic Smurfs were laid down overnight, waiting at the bus stop, playing around the fountain at the schoolyard, and kids were able to pick them up in the morning. 
And back at the time when people had actually missed their opportunity to pick up these Smurfs, they actually wound up being for sale from UNICEF where the proceeds went to help the children's fund. So even though they made that terrible war campaign, <laughs> war campaign clip, they actually did something kind of nice here, which is, you know, I, I guess making up for their stupidity for the earlier thing. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I find that whole war thing to be in just like bad taste, but whatever. Now, I remember as a kid having quite a few of these Smurfs. I had nowhere near the amount of Smurfs that my late cousin had. My cousin Tina had dozens of these Smurfs and she had a big collector case. And there were collector cases like this that were actually available for those serious collectors that were out there. And there was actually quite a few different other ones. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to show every single one, but there were plenty of them out there. And along with just the regular Smurf figures that they produced every single year, they also produced things like the Smurf mushroom houses in a few different sizes and in many different colors, giving you many different options on how you can customize your own type of Smurf village. Now, there were also some vehicles that were available and boats and other things like that as well. And along with the traditional Smurfs that they created just for the regular line, they actually created special edition ones, such as the Colonial American Smurfs. The holiday versions, such as Christmas, they I know they had Halloween and Thanksgiving. They had many different ones that they offered at select times of the year or for special occasions when they were celebrating an anniversary for something. Now, one of the Smurfs that I remember the most was this little guy, the Devil Smurf. This was actually my late mother's favorite Smurf of all times, and I had to go out of my way to find her one so I could send it to her on her birthday. Because at the time that I was looking for this thing, it was actually quite difficult to find, and I just got lucky one day and managed to pick it up. Since then, I've seen them all over the place, so yeah, just go figure. It is what it is, right? Ravage the land as never before. Total destruction from mountain to shore. And with all the different merchandising that they made available for the Smurfs toy line, it was probably just a matter of time until they got inspiration from the Smurfs line to be able to incorporate it with other lines, such as 1984 when they came out with the Snorks. This was done by Peo, of course, and produced through the different companies, and there were a certain amount of figures that they actually produced in the same style as the Smurf figures. And growing up in the 80s, if you remember the Smurfs, you more than likely remember the Snorks as well. It was just another one of those 1980s fun type of cartoons that were available out there for everybody to watch and enjoy. So anyway, guys, do you remember these toys? Do you remember the cartoon and remember the toys as a consequence of that? Or are you really just hearing about this for the first time because you only know about the newer movie? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, as always, if you have a suggestion for a toy line that you want to hear about, go ahead and leave that down in the comment section as well. And of course, my friends, I am oh so happy that you decided to spend time here on the channel with me today and watch this video. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you enjoyed what you've seen and what you heard, go ahead and destroy that like button for me. And if you are new to the channel, welcome. I hope that you've had a good time. And if you enjoyed what you've seen and what you heard, maybe go check out some of my other videos. And if you like that as well, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We would greatly appreciate it. And remember, guys, never let anybody tell you what you can and can't say, what you should or shouldn't do, because your silence gives consent. And I will catch you all next time. Later, y'all.